Uh, hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs> what's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to Midwest Whitetail After Hours, presented by Hoyt Archery. Uh, my name is Jason Science. I'm joined by a couple other folks that I'll introduce in just a second. Today is October the 23rd, and uh, we've had a busy week, haven't we, fellas? I'm joined by Jared, Justin, Grant, Max, and Mike. How's it going tonight, guys? Doing well. Doing well. Doing well. <clears throat> I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out uh, who has the best story, but you guys all have a pretty good poker face tonight. I think there's going to be some good ones from what I'm hearing. Yeah, it's been uh, it it's been an eventful week. I haven't had an uneventful sit um, yet this hmm. week. So, so we who did, wants to go we, first? We did have someone break the ice and put a buck on the ground this morning, and I sent out a group text. To That's everyone awesome. saying we're doing a podcast. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've been practicing, go. Jason. Right? I have been waiting to use that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. For that, that was one. perfect. That is awesome. podcast in. Yeah, good. So most, oh, wait, most we guys recording. don't know. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> yeah. Seven podcasts in. Most guys don't know who killed. So uh Whoever did kill, go ahead and take it. I broke the ice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. The tuxedo killer. Grant live from a wedding. Good, yeah. <laughs> immediately <laughs> ditches. I lose my cameraman immediately. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, one and done. I'm out. I'm it's out, out of there. there. Shot this morning. He's got 17 <laughs> weddings to go to. This yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, oh, man. No, it was a, uh, it was a sweet hunt. It was just like a classic October, kind of mid to late October morning hunt. It was cool, crisp, thermals are rising. And Max and I went to, and hunted a permission farm that we just got about two weeks ago. And we have a, a Cuddy Link cell cam up on that property. And ever since we put it out, we've always gotten kind of later movement in the morning and like all the way up to like 1030 in the morning. So we knew it was going to be kind of a longer sit. And, you know, we get up there, we get all set up and... I mean, we don't even see a deer until 8.30, and we're kind of, like, bummed out. We're like, what in the world is going on? I mean, we getting, we've been getting pictures of all these deer. <laughs> we thought we went in there and screwed something up or something. And um, finally, 8.30, we saw our first deer. And ever since then, like, right at that time, it's like a light switch went off. I mean, they just started dumping in from everywhere. I mean, we were – I mean, at one point, we were we had deer on all sides of the tree. And, um, we were kind of on an Oak Ridge. We had a pretty thick bedding area to our North across the Creek. And then we also had a pretty thick bedding area to our East. And so I guess we were kind of hunting that movement of, you know, between bedding areas. And we got, we also have a big crop field and a lot of CRP fields around. So kind of just hunting that movement between those bedding areas and those feeding areas. And we're sitting there filming a doe. Um, eating acorns and Max looks up and kind of taps me on the shoulder and sees this buck running through the bean field in front of us. And I mean, not two minutes later, we see this buck and he's, and you can't really tell what he is. He, you, we have a tree right to my left. And so you can see a body moving through the tree, but you can't really exactly tell what it is. And I mean, I have a shooting lane at 20 yards, and I can't see anything until he gets in that shooting lane. Well, he got in that shooting lane, and, I mean, I had my hands in my pockets. I just thought it was like another four corn that we had around <laughs> us or something. And this buck, this buck pops out and just literally sits there perfectly broadside. I mean, it, you couldn't have drawn it up any better. <laughs> And I don't know if he was just looking at some of the deer behind us, but he just like sat there. And I was, I asked Max, I was like, should I, should I shoot that deer? <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of just like nonchalantly grabbed my bow 
and I'm like, all right, I, I guess I'm going to shoot this deer. <laughs> and I drew back and I just freaking, I, I smoked him. I, mean, I, sh- I shot him right behind the shoulder and he runs like, I'd say probably 50 or 60 yards and just dies right there. I mean, it was, it was a sweet hunt, but definitely the movement definitely got us excited. I mean, that was just, we had little bucks chasing those, nudging does on the ridge above us. Um, obviously the buck that I shot was nudging something across the field. We could, we didn't have a great look at him, so we didn't know if he was chasing the doe or what, but it definitely sure looked like he was chasing the doe, but it was just a sweet hunt. I bet so. we saw 20 or more and it's crazy because I bet you you'd let that arrow go at toward 10 o'clock. And so we didn't yeah. see deer from eight thirty, and eight, 20 deer is a lot of deer to see in an hour. And then are you talking out of those 20? 10 of them in bow range it was just a circus i don't think yep. one of those hunts of video is not going to do it justice you just had to be in that tree where like he's like oh deer in front of us and I'm, oh deer behind us da, da. and you're just like yeah. i don't know who to film i'm like what am i doing yeah <laughs> i mean we we had deer coming in after the shot even i mean yeah they were still pacing out. still posture yeah. to each other it's like holy cow it was all it was one of those mornings that you just live for that right there yeah, and it's such steam, a sweet steam tree. rising. It's such a sweet tree too, because it's kind of in a spot where you can see lit like 360 degrees around you. I mean, it's I mean, it's a perfect spot, especially those kind of mornings where it's real calm. And your thermals are just rising. It's just a perfect spot to get in there and you know just see a lot of deer. You guys were kind of in the timber. Yeah, we were in the timber. Yeah. How long deep. were you planning on? How long were you planning on sitting yeah. till? We had planned <laughs> like like the ten thirty mark probably. Okay. If, he, if you would if, if you would ask me at eight o'clock, I'd be saying about eight fifteen probably until that <laughs> yeah. first beer. Man, we were <laughs> yeah. bomb. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good deer. I was <clears throat> I was fortunate enough to go celebrate with the boys and take pictures and stuff. It was big bodied, real cool gray face on him. Uh, one of the funniest parts I think for me was, <laughs> I think Grant had that little, you know, tagged out early, kind of a little bit of disappointment too. <laughs> it's like my season's <laughs> over already, you know. And he goes, he's like, he just came in too fast, and you know, both Max and Max and Grant being implants in the aisle. Uh, Max's line was, "You you just don't come in hot on out of state. You're gonna get narrow every time you come in hot on an out out of state." <laughs> You just don't do it. We've seen that time and time again. When, when you make it. For you, <laughs> There's no. He would have just here. nosied on through. We would, he'd been still living. Came in hot. <laughs> oh man! Should I? That deer That's awesome, man. Did anybody guys, else yeah. go out this morning? Yeah, I did. Pretty slow for me. Pretty slow. Yeah, I yeah, saw I, uh, a couple little bucks and and a uh, bunch, of, handful of does. So not not a whole lot of action. Uh, we haven't seen really hardly any any morning movement by us. It's been all all the night movement, but man, the night movement's been fantastic the last three days. So yeah, for those of you guys that, that don't know, we got Justin Camps uh, on the line with us tonight too. He's been a long long time team member with us uh, want to get an update over there from illinois i know you at least have one big deer story from yesterday but start with how'd you how'd your hunt go tonight you're going after one of your hitless bucks yeah i was going after a birthday buck so i saw him opening october 1st and then i saw him we came down thursday and saw had him at 50 yards thursday night he came out and he was bumping does and then just kind of did a big, big circle around us we're sitting in the in the middle of a bean field with alfalfa behind us. So it was sweet to see him again. Uh, tonight we had a really pretty four-year-old come out. Uh, he was the only buck we saw, um, but he was really pretty. Um, yeah, he came out and he was chasing does all over and then he went uh, tearing through the woods. So that was neat to see. Um, I would say last night's movement was a little better for all of us. Um, I think one of my brothers saw three bucks that were you know, five plus years old uh, chasing and sparring. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so yeah, the, I've, I've seen at least a four-year-old buck every sit in the last three days and then, and birthday buck, uh, 
and then a handful of, you know, younger bucks that were, were nice and up and coming. But, uh, yeah, last night, so my dad, uh, has been hunting a buck that we call caribou. Um, it was on a new farm that we, we bought, this is our third year. And so the first year we got it, it's it really been shot up quite a bit. So we knew we were just going to have to let it go. Um, so this buck we got as a three-year-old two years ago, and he was, he was a really cool buck. He had kind of heavy palmation as a three-year-old, but his tines were pretty short. So it's just one that we, we wanted to watch and we found his sheds and they were like 130 inch deer. Then last year, um, man, he really added pretty much everywhere. And, um, we figured he was four and we were going to let him go again. We found his sheds again and he was 180 inch deer last year. And we, we, were, yeah. we were hoping wow. he was going to, we were hoping he was going to make it through because we knew the neighbors, you know, we trade pictures with them and, and they were on it and they were going to shoot it if they could. But the good news is he was kind of in the core of our property. So we, we didn't hunt that property really at all for two years and just let it go. And so then we went after it this year and I would say caribou's frame looked similar, but he added two drop tines. Um, and one of them, you know, the drop tine ended up being 10 and a half inches, the first one. And the other one was four inch drop tine. So, oh my yeah, dad gosh. went up. Holy <laughs> cow, dude. It's wow. so pretty, yeah, pretty wild. Actually, his drop time is his longest point. Um, so, wow. yeah, dad was, sit, dad was sitting in a, a cornfield in a blind, and he's probably 50 yards off of, it's kind of a, a creek bottom, and there's CRP, and it's maybe, it's a small little section, but maybe a five-acre CRP section. And I was getting pictures of him really the last three years um, down in this, this CRP area, there's some good scrapes down there that we'd have cameras on. Um, and so we knew he was in the area. So yeah, dad's been sitting there um, just at night sitting on the food and he had him come out maybe five 30 coming out of that grass and, and just came feeding into that cornfield. And so he put a, put a shot on him and he died in the field. So it was, it was really, <laughs> oh, a, man. that's awesome. It was really a spectacular deer. Uh, you know, it's one that he, we knew he was, he was good. Obviously it was 180 inch deer last year. But uh, he he was a lot better than we were expecting even then. So along with the drop tines, I mean he's 24 inch inside spread. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he his tines still weren't his tines aren't super tall, but man he's got it everywhere else. He's got you know I think his one beams are almost 27 inches and um, great mass. So yeah, he ended up scoring uh, 209 and five A's. Oh, so, dude, that is wow, that's insane. So, Justin, yeah, you it, care? It, 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 it is insane. Do you care no, if I show can, a picture? No, no problem. You guys can see it. Oh, you're oh, not on wow. my. You're not big on my screen. How do I fix that? <laughs> Say something, dear. <laughs> what makes you big? <laughs> test, test, test. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh, dude. What, a what a tank! Tank, yeah. Dude, wow. I uh, I filmed the antlers tonight. Uh, me holding them, so I'll send that in uh, so guys can see it next week. But awesome. yeah, just just a remarkable deer. But just just really neat to see when you get a, a big genetic deer like that. What he does in three years, um, it's pretty remarkable. So we were all super excited. I was down there with my two brothers and dad. So it was really neat to be a part of all that. And obviously, to, for dad to kill his biggest deer, really special. So an awesome an awesome weekend for us. That's no, so cool no, that you guys laid off that farm. That's so I've always people like say that all the time, like maybe I should stay out of there, but the fact you guys did that, that's sweet. I bet that was <laughs> anticipation was unreal. Uh, oh, for sure. It was too. And you know, we didn't even want to hunt it because we didn't want to be tempted. I mean, he was so good <laughs> last year. <laughs> we, we didn't want to we didn't want to have to make that decision. Uh, and you know, we've been blessed with, we have some other good property and some good deer to hunt. So it, it, that makes it a little easier, but, uh, yeah, yeah he was probably, he was probably our biggest deer that we had to hunt last year. Um, but yeah, we laid off of him because we knew he had the potential to really get, really get big. And, and he did. Wow. That's awesome. Justin, Man, how big that. is the birthday buck? I know I've seen, I remember some footage. How big is he this year? Um, I'm going to guess mid one seventies. He's, he's got a, Man. He's got a big boxy frame and tall tines. He's not a real heavy deer. Um, I think last year he was upper 60s, so he might surprise us. He might be a little better, but that's that's my conservative guess right now. And you got to stay on Giants. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, this this year is incredible. I mean, last year we were hunting a lot of uh, big mature deer, you know, in the 150s. 
but all of our, our young deer were actually our biggest deer. So this year is an incredible growth year for us. We're after a couple of really, really good deer. So it's a really exciting year for us. And, and it's been good. I mean, we saw one of our really big eight points, uh, for the first time, we kind of lost them off camera. I got two pictures of them this summer over a little, you know, a dr drying up watering hole. And, uh, we lost him. He didn't, he wasn't where he was last year. And actually, uh, yeah, one of my brothers saw him last night, right at dark came out to like 45 yards, but it was too dark to shoot. Uh, but he's, he's, a you know, a, probably a, at least a mid one sixties, eight point, just a huge deer. So yeah, we've got some really good ones that hopefully we can lay down some footage, uh, in the next couple of weeks. That's awesome. I'll be looking forward to it. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah, Mike, how'd your hunt go tonight? I was going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> Mike no, no. and I were hunting like, what, 300 yards apart probably? <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> it, was a, it was a little slow. Um, you know, when I was walking in there, uh, when I got close to the south plot, I mean, there, I had some pretty strong northerly gusts. And... Um, you know, which I kind of was afraid that it was going to do that some. And I got caught last year, this time of year, with an east wind on in the pinch, getting a northerly gust and spooking Dak out of there. So we we ended up going in the pinch. We went on the, the north end of it, um, actually right where the stand is, where um, Ed shot his big deer. So kind of getting mm -hmm. close to the park or getting close to that ditch, kind of the northwest corner of that pinch. So I couldn't see anything coming, but, and I was in a wider part of the, of the area, but I figured if I had a buck working out towards the home camera or something, I could call to him or whatever. If they came up the riverside, we'd be in the chips. Um, so we ended up having a doe and a fawn come running under us as right after we got set up front, like into the peninsula, which, you know, is the opposite deer movement we normally get. So something had deer stirred up. And, and we saw a little bit more of that, some does, some young bucks. Um, ended up seeing that buck with the broken G2. He broke in velvet. Um, yeah. He came by along the slough, you know, and he was kind of following some of those does out. And then we saw probably the highlight of the night <laughs> was Bob Jr. No <laughs> way. So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> Jared, you filmed him. We, I think we both filmed last year as a button buck, like the week after Grant killed yeah. Bob. Bob's uh, come back to life. So, you know, we had it, – it's crazy. We made it immediately. So, uh, anyway, he's got three-inch spikes this year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait till we have seven years of history. Grant. Oh my God! No, uh, you just kill it early and be done. Yeah. Well, call, call we'll put me your name on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah. So tonight was probably one of the slower nights. Um, you know, we had uh last night was good last night we filmed um patient x you know out of the cherry tree so that that was three nights in a row in the cherry tree where we had a five plus year old buck mm -hmm. uh you know and then this morning we set up i went back in the alfalfa in a different area and did a hanging hunt and we filmed a real beautiful four-year-old this big framey deer he has short fours but long twos and threes and he came in the 40 yards I had some pictures of that deer and um, he came in and we, we filmed that nice lot sided. New, different house, same problem. <laughs> uh, <laughs> same problem. 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 Same Same problem. 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 I have to say. Oh. Are you on your yeah. Wi-Fi or is it cellular? Frozen again. I've quit using my phone. <laughs> I'm stuck. on the Wi-Fi over here. He's stuck. I'm going to leave go. and come back. I'm going to leave and I'm gonna was... leave and come back. All right. That's what I'm going to do. So I was hunting like probably 300 yards away from Mike. 
<clears throat> towards the north end of our farm. And it was a it was a pretty decent night. We saw 15 or so deer, I think. And the best one was a big frame four-year-old. You know, speaking of the Bob hunt, the deer you passed Grant before oh, you shot Bob. I we knew had him. It was about time you were gonna see that deer. We That's had awesome. Him. It, it, yeah, he, he's beautiful framey deer. He came out out on the beans, kind of kind of pushing those around a little bit, but it, for the most part he stayed to himself. But that, that'll be this. It seems like on that farm in general, we have these big four year olds and we see them a million times their four year old year and then they disappear their five year old year. So that, that's so, probably what will happen with him too. Um, mm. But it was, it was good to see him get good footage of him. He probably came out around, uh, probably around six o'clock, I would say. We saw our first deer shortly after five and it was just, just a lot of, a lot of moseying around kind of in the bedding but then they they eventually did start feeding in the beans we were sitting over over beans so <clears throat> it was good to see that so you back per- mike i think so yeah <laughs> sounds know. good it, it always feels like i'm I, I i can hear and see you guys moving it's just me that's frozen on your screen so i have no idea that I'm getting it. <laughs> it's terrible i don't know i don't know what to do anymore anyway Anyway, what, so you ended up having a good hunt? Yeah, it was a solid hunt. It's all probably 15 or so deer, and uh, the best one was that big framey four-year-old. Oh, cool. Yeah, we got good footage of him. Yep. Cool. He came out, he came out of the, the willows and uh, just kind of messed around, raked a tree for a while, and then came out into the beans and fed. That's awesome. Yeah, it's good to see him. He's a, he's so how a did- good-looking deer. The beans look. You can you shoot at them? I only got a few can words of that. The, can I shoot beans? in the beans? Uh, they're pretty dang weedy, but you have lanes. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was well, a decent night. I mean, nothing, nothing too crazy, <laughs> but Max, what you got? I'm, a, I'm anxious to hear this. Let's hear, yeah, this let's hear it. Uh, well, I'll put it, I'll get into the story, but the overarching theme is that this morning was the, just a blessing of permission. Is I love permission ground. I love it. I love it. And then this afternoon, I, I cursed permission ground. I was <laughs> walking out of there. So... As we talked about on the podcast the other night, this is three years in the making of hunting this farm on cut corn. And not only this farm, we got to hunt it last night, which, so last night we go in, we took Mike's advice, we took, we broke the decoy out, and the deer that Grant and I both planned on seeing, it's a super big frame, 10, I'm kind of on the fence if he's four or five. And I, I was one deer I wanted to see to know, like, it might be a game time decision. Short twos, but great, great spread, great beans, tying, like, everything. We just knew we were going to see him. He has been all over every camera. And uh, last night, we took the decoy out, took Mike's advice. We, we were thinking no, and then we said, heck, let's just take it. And uh, saw a pile of deer <laughs> on the north side of this farm. Um, a pile. I mean, we must have seen 30. Saw a really good buck in the distance. And then it kind of just ended. It was kind of anticlimactic. Didn't have a deer in bow range, kind of what we figured, you know. And then so Grant's packing up camera gear. I'm, uh, I put my quiver on my bow. And when I put my quiver on, I look up and I just hear that. And I look and son of a gun, the short 210 is just marching at the decoy. (laughs) And he gets all up in that decoy's grill spinning around he can't figure out which way to hit it from and then I, I think he finally when he was about to go in to hit it he he caught a little bit of scent and kind of boogered but of course granted just put the camera in the bag i mean crazy i knew we were gonna see that deer it was a sweet would have been a sweet encounter if it was 15 minutes earlier i got a picture of him uh when we got back to the truck i had a picture of him 100 and i think i measured on onyx it's like 170 yards away on further north already ears already pinned back <laughs> headed right at the decoy <laughs> so last night was sweet a little anticlimactic that it happened after 
legal, but then they didn't finish cutting the whole farm. So they, they finished um, last night and early this morning. So I was able to, I was headed to the south side this afternoon, which is really like the spot that we've been waiting this, this three-year period for. So I get in the blind, Grant being tagged out, I couldn't really decide like what to do. Like I, I kind of wanted him there or somebody like filming. And so I decided to take my uh, girlfriend's brother. He's kind of just getting into bow hunting and we have a deer that is just crazy on. Like I just, I know exactly where this deer is bedding. We call him the bully, the super old giant body deer that I think I was talking about on the other night. Every time they're sparring or every time anything happens, the very next picture there's that joker every time. And so got pictures of him going to bed this morning and I just, I knew he was going to come out. And so I take, uh, my girlfriend's brother and we get in the blind and the movement was pretty late. We, we didn't see our first deer until like five forty-five, which I, I thought was, was strange. And so sure enough, five forty-five, doe pops out right where I think he's bedding. There he is. He's like 200 yards. He's chasing her. They're running right at us. They're, they're milling around. And she stopped probably a hundred yards to my north. So I'm sitting in a, in a ground blind over a, a little, it was a secluded brassica plot surrounded by corn, but now it's cut. So I got cut corn, cut corn, brassicas, this super mature deer that I was hoping he would shoot chasing a doe down to me. The same time I looked to my right, one of my gear for sure shooters and a four-year-old that I would probably shoot here they come. So I got a freaking tank over here and then i got two more shooters and they're about to meet in the plot at 20 no. yards and they're posturing already this is like 150 yards i'm glassing left right left right they're already postured and here they all three come and i'm like i don't know what to do like i want him to shoot this deer to get him out i want to shoot this deer it's just a chaos <laughs> and they i'm looking at this deer on my right and they're facing up toward the road and they just stop and it's like the posture goes from bristled to like they go from looking like a five-year-old to a two-year-old, like all the hair sits down and they just heads up. And I just figured that that can't be good. And I look up and the big deer is gone. And here is a dude driving across an 80 acre cut cornfield <clears throat> on a ranger. Mm. And yeah. he, Grant, yeah. I'm sure got the cell cam picture. And I'm yeah, sure that's I did. What you're I did. <laughs> Oh man, dude, this guy comes from five, six hundred yards. So he pulls off the road. I guess he didn't see my truck. I'm giving this guy the benefit of the doubt. He didn't, I guess he didn't see my truck. And he comes, and these two mature deer let him get probably a hundred yards away, and they're still looking, and then they finally bust. And so he pulls all the way up to my brassica plot right to the edge and puts it in park. And by this time, I'm I'm marching out of my blind, like <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a big guy, but I'm like I'm feeling six feet tall. Like this is, I don't know what's about to happen, but I'm like binoculars off. Like we're about to do this thing. I'm ticked, and I I talked to the guy. Like I, I was I, after the conversation, we had a great conversation. He's a guy. He's a local. He lives just down the road. He's been hunting that farm on and off. Apparently, he's had permission for forever since since the landowner's father owned the property super nice guy. He's, you know, he's been, he's got a stand, a ladder stand that I've seen in there, but I wasn't aware that anybody else hunted here besides, um, Grant and I and another buddy of ours. And so I, I was like, man, this is a trespass or a poacher. And, um, matter of fact, can you guys still hear me? Mm -hmm. yep, yep. Okay. I thought my earbud died. Uh, we had a picture of this guy last year, almost to the day driving through that thing. And he drove same thing, drove, this last year he drove into the woods in this utv so like i had blood in my eyes i'm like this is the guy he he moved a couple of cameras around last year he didn't take them but he moved them. i was like oh i'm gonna end this guy and i felt i felt like a real jerk i like went big and bad like that bully deer walking into him and i left like tail tucked like i'm a jerk i was just he left like, he left like a two-year-old i left like a two-year-old i'm like that was just a nice guy he was coming to he had he had noticed that the corn was cut and he was just coming to check his straps on his ladder stand and, you know, make sure that he was, he was ready to go for this bow season too. But to have like a, I don't know how old that, that bully deer is. He's like, I'm putting him, he's at least six, but you could be older just like to have him coming. And then 
two more. <laughs> like, they're about to meet in the plot at 20 yards. And then just to have that, it's crazy. I, Grant and I have never seen another person here. Didn't Like I said, didn't know anybody had permission. But the other guy we share permission with has been hunting that property now on its ninth season. And he has never seen that guy. And so I asked the guy, like, how often do you come out? And he said, one or two times a year maybe so the the day the night he came to check that you know check his ladder stand was the night oh, so what what deer did you see what was the other deer so i saw the bully obviously came from the north coming down yeah. and then i saw i saw your deer i saw the high and tight deer and i saw that deer with no the, yeah high and tight deer and then the other deer with that <laughs> wicked hook both of them oh and potentially, <laughs> potentially saw the inside point eight. All, all these deer. I mean, that, no that literally just, just makes me sick for you. I think. So I, I mean, we, that's miserable. So the, it's just crazy because I, like I said, it was a, it was a humbling. If I, if it was anything, it stuck. But it was humbling. Like just another hunter. Just that you can't be mad. We need more hunters. So I kind of left. I had a, re, a good reflection talking with. Uh, with Dylan on the way home it was his what stinks too is this his first bow hunt and just the anticipation of like if I'm if he knows like I've been hunting for a while but I was nervous and so he he's like what, what do I do and I'm like dude just get ready it's about to go down <laughs> so it's, it stinks. first time bow hunt has a super mature deer that green light to engage and I, he was just these I don't know like he was he was less than a hundred and they were a hundred and they were, and they were just postured. I've never seen three posture. These are single file. I don't know if it was about to be a gang. I don't know if they got like a little South side gang going where they're going <laughs> to fight the North boys, but it was unfortunate. I mean, the day you wait three years for it and it was it, it was the day. I mean, three shooters in the field is epic and the footage is terrible too. Cause I'm, I don't know who to film and then here comes the ranger and it's a it was a disaster but i i the whole time when i was driving home i was like i know grant saw that cell cam picture of that oh ranger i saw it i was sitting yeah. there and i didn't want to ask you because i want to talk about it on yeah. this podcast but i i figured something was a little fishy about that so if there's anything i mean this morning like i said for as far as permission that's the highest of highs the lowest of lows i'm thankful you know it wasn't a poacher and honestly it's it's good to anybody that has permission he was i asked you know I'm like hey i hope i'm not stepping on your toes and he's like no i got other places to hunt just glad you, you turned out to be a nice guy that we can get along and so it was a great conversation it's good to meet a guy but are you kidding like you could have checked him this morning or tomorrow and but it happens <laughs> i guess that's crazy <laughs> three uh, shooters about yeah, i mean rough. And, that's rough Three three shooters in muzzleloader range, and then you know closing closing the distance. Perfect win for me, and it, it's kind of one of those like I was a fly on, I was about to be a fly on the wall of of that encounter between them because it was like I could have probably just been standing out of the blind waving my arms. They didn't care. They were just like, oof, you just see it, man. man. So that's crazy. Wow. Yeah, <clears throat> Jason, can you top that? Uh, no, 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 <laughs> not even close. Um, it, uh, I had a, a good, a good night in terms of what I saw, not really a good night in terms of the volume of deer that I saw. It was, uh, it was really slow. What's, what's got my mind boggled before we get into the night is, is how uncharacteristic the movement is at least here in wisconsin like you know i'm driving down the road to to my lease not that far away and here's a, like a year and a half running down the middle of the road with his tongue hanging out like he's you know like it's november 10th and uh, i'm seeing not a ton of it but a significant amount like more than i've ever seen before um and then climbing in your stand at 3 30 um and not you know barely getting strapped in and and having you know, deer running every which way. It's just been awfully odd. But uh, tonight wasn't like that. I sat uh, a little bit farther outside of what I had been sitting since um, Trump Tower went down. Um, I went to the east side of the farm to hunt a deer I call Gumby. I sent uh, Jared a picture earlier. He's a, he's a deer I'd, I passed last year, and he just blew up this year, and, and he's just a freak. Um, he's got three main beams, and 
Um, two of the beams are like Louisville sluggers because um, they're mm. palmated. They're just, he's just a big old, big old mature deer now. And, and uh, um, so I've been in hunting him, but decided to lay off and go to, go to alfalfa, um, like sit right over it. And uh, I had my cameraman and he said, hey, here comes a buck. Uh, he said he's it's got tall tines, and I quick turned and looked, and uh, there's a, a section of of oaks um, that run east and west. Um, there's marsh on the south side of the oaks. I'm on the north side of the oaks, which is where the uh, clover is, and he's coming right down the middle. And, and I ranged him right away when when I saw him, and I'm like, oh, that's Gumby, and he was at 42 yards, but I didn't have a shot really there because um, he was quartered two and and uh, I knew he was going to get downwind. I I knew it was going to happen, and uh, I just thought that he. Um, it was one of those deals where he stopped, and then he t- he turned and starts walking right at you. And you're like, "Yes, here we go. This is this is in the bag." I had him on the back of the truck, and uh, and he stopped and turned around and went the other direction. And eventually, he he caught. I don't know if he caught our wind or smelled the ozone. Whatever it was, he, he just wasn't sure about it, and he's he's old enough to know better. So he just turned around and, and got out of there. And so we saw that deer at 524, I think it was, and saw another one, good three-year-old, at like, I don't know, 10 to 6, and didn't see another deer, but filmed a bobcat um, for probably five minutes out in front of me. Nice. That's yeah, sweet. Sweet. Yeah, so... Getting closer, um, Gumby has been gone um, from the second or third week of September up until last week, maybe 10 days ago he showed up, and uh, he's a good deer. Um, definitely, definitely going to chase him, see what's, what happens tomorrow morning. I haven't been out in the morning yet. Tomorrow morning will be my first morning hunt, so looking forward to that. I'm not 100% sure of, of if I'm going to go in after him or after the Unabomber. On um, two different sides of the farm, but we'll see once. Clip a coin. With some of the activity you're seeing, I would <clears throat> I'd definitely be hunting in the morning. I'd be curious to know or hear how you do. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of, uh, like this morning I was telling you earlier, Jared, I went on a goose hunt and, um, and duck hunt, and uh, I was getting cut, I think, pictures just constantly <laughs> laying in that layout blind. <laughs> <laughs> My phone's going <laughs> off, and I'm like, <laughs> and, and so yeah i probably should have been out there but uh um and I, I wasn't it's it, i can't imagine that uh it's all of a sudden gonna die off here the weather looks like it's gonna hold we're gonna have some funky winds here i don't know what you guys are gonna have down there um or in illinois but it looks like it's gonna be east for a while or some somewhat yeah. east whether it's north northeast uh, east southeast i've actually got a couple places that set up really good for that in the morning which works out well because i've got some business i've got to take care of this week um so i can do some mornings but not afternoon so maybe that'll be a good thing sweet yeah, sounds good like a pretty you. pretty solid night of movement all around for the most part yeah. Is it, would you would you guys all agree that um, you're seeing, uh, uh, you know, I guess what you'd expect to see this time of year, or is it like in my case a little bit heightened? Way heightened, I thought. Okay. Yeah, I think it's cons- considerably better. And what I find is, um, especially around a full moon, a couple of days before and after, right? Um, even though it is middle or end of, you know, I guess it's not, it's a little past middle of October, but uh, yeah, it's it's been. I would say exceptional. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's been, it's been really good. I, I can't say I have had a bad night. Our mornings have been good. The, the yesterday morning before Grant obviously killed this morning, but yesterday morning we dove into a new farm and had a awesome morning deer chasing down through his thicket, filmed like a solid, solid three year old cameras are good as well i mean i've almost been more impressed obviously grant killing this morning did a lot with the mature deer on his feet at almost 10 o'clock but it's almost i don't know a ton of daylight activity where a week ago was terrible uh, yeah yeah <clears throat> it's right. definitely shifted a lot from what it was 
I mean, I'm, I, I, I would say I'm seeing about what I would expect right now, these last couple of hunts of mine. And I haven't hunted morning, so I, I can't speak for that. But um, the movement and just the way the bucks are acting has been right on par for me anyways. Cool. Anybody got anything yeah, else? I'd say the same. I have a lot of... Yeah. <laughs> we, I guess, I, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna just stop trying. Somebody, tra- somebody, somebody translate for Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna use some sign language. Okay. Good job, guys. I love you. Good luck. <laughs> if uh, if we do have a quick second, I did get a Instagram. We got a a message this afternoon wanting to just if we could quick talk, uh, answer a question, maybe like one or two, you guys could, if we got time, that's a good question. This guy said, um, this is Austin Johnson said, what is your guys prediction and outlook on what is to come in the next few weeks pertaining to the weather and the moon phase, as far as the deer activity, the 10, I know for like the 10 day forecast looks phenomenal. We got rain here pretty much 24 hours straight tomorrow, but the 10 day looks phenomenal. I think the high Monday is like 50. Yeah. Monday is in a couple of days from now. Yeah. Rain all day tomorrow. And then the day after 50 degrees and looks dead North wind, like not crazy hard. It looks phenomenal. And it looks like a lot of days after that even look really good. Justin, do you want to, touch a little more on what you're saying about the moon because yeah. i was asking about the moon stuff yeah what, yeah what's your yeah. what's your take justin well we we've seen on a on a full moon especially right right around that it's been been really good for us so i think last year i think end of october was a full moon and you hit that with good temperatures and it's just rocking so i obviously the you know the moon will be i think it was full a day or two ago something like that um so I don't know that it'll be quite as good, but with the temperatures, usually temperatures trump moon uh, this time of year anyway. So, yeah, when yeah. you've got lows in the 30s and highs in the 50s for a week straight this time of year, uh, it's exciting. Looking yeah. forward to it. I think it'll be a, a really solid uh, forecast for the next week and a half. It looks like it's not going to be a repeat of last year and 80 degree temperatures on the uh, 2nd of November or whatever it was. It was miserable. Yeah, I, ki- I, ki- I killed my buck when it was 70. <laughs> yeah, me too. Did you really? Yeah. Yeah, I killed mine. It was like, I think I was at least 70. Jared, what's your take on the moon? I don't feel like we don't talk about the moon very much. Maybe I don't, I don't hear it, but I feel like we don't talk much about it. Yeah. <clears throat> like uh, when we're, when you're talking full moon, in my experience, I've had better like later morning, midday type movement. Um, you know, I remember, remember one year we were just kind of fighting. Or it, it was full moon, I think, in like mid-November, mid to late November. And uh, I used the full moon to hang a stand, the, the light to hang a stand in the middle of the night. I went and killed at like 11, 11 a.m., 11.30 a.m. the next day or something like that. And I've, I've always just liked hanging in a little longer when we do have full moons for whatever reason, I don't know what it is, but I just see better midday type movement when we're talking full moon. Um, as far as what I'm looking at for like the forecast, uh, I'm just more looking at the weather right now, like kind of what Justin said. I'm really hoping to try to capitalize on a, on a resident buck within the next week to two weeks before things get too crazy. You know, I'm, I'm just banking on this increased activity we're seeing right now continuing over the next week as we hit you know this really good time frame of late october so that's kind of what i'm looking at for the next week or so is just try to try to capitalize on this big spike in in activity that we're seeing yeah and to piggyback off what jared said that's usually i don't we don't come even this early usually wait till the end of october but with the with the nice temperature drops here in illinois we thought we'd come in early but that's been a really good time frame for us end of october to get those resident bucks early november even um that's why i've been hard, hard, trying hard to get birthday bucks i have only a couple spots for him but he's been pretty visible mm. uh, and this is usually the time of year i can get on him before he he starts cruising 
Yeah. Cool. Anybody got anything else they want to add? I don't. I, I've I've never had um, a ton of luck uh, around the full moon. Um, that's. I know that there's a lot of folks that have, and that just may be my, you know, inefficiency or whatever. But um, <laughs> I just uh, I I've never had a ton of luck, and maybe because I I only sit till a quarter to mm -hmm. eight. No, I'm, I'm just yeah. kidding. I sit later than that, but, <laughs> but uh, it, it, I'm I'm not known for sticking it out real late. Let's put it yeah. that way. It's the same when I'm coming in the morning. All right. Uh, I like that, Max. I mean, it, it, if more people want to contribute questions, I think that's a really good idea. I think. Yeah, we, we can we'll have to, to we'll podcast. have to get some the Instagram. Uh, we've had a couple. So I need to circle back and for next one, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll jot down a couple of ones that came through, but as far as the most recent information you can get, I mean, that, that question was just sent in while I was in the blind this afternoon. So that's a pretty sweet thing. It would have helped me yeah. a ton. Still does yeah. help me talk to you guys. So yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Well, congrats, Grant. Way to break the ice. Hopefully yeah, we'll but let's keep the train rolling. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. I'm pretty pumped about it. All right, well let's uh let's do it again so I can hit that applause button again. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have anything else they want to add before we wrap it up for the Good evening? Week. No? Yeah. Thanks for All hopping right. on, Dustin. Right. Yeah, yeah, dude. Good luck to you here, man. Good luck Thank to everybody you. else. Be safe. Enjoy the rest of the uh the rest of the weekend. Thanks, guys. Hey. All right. There you go. We're out. <laughs>